This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. This is Central Texas Life with Ann Harder. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Central Texas Life. And I am so happy to introduce you to Amy Trawick. Yes. Who also has a podcast here with Rogue Media. I do. First yes. of all, let's let's talk about your podcast. Okay, so I do have a fairly new podcast. It's called Photographic Memories, and it's kind of a, a spin-off from my business, Revision Photo Restoration, because a lot of times clients come to me. And they have pictures that need to be restored, um, but they also have these really cool stories sometimes behind the pictures. And part of what I love the most about what I do is getting to talk to my clients about their family history and hearing just those stories. And it kind of dawned on me that, gosh, this would make a really good podcast. (laughs) And I actually, um, I met uh, the Rogue Media guys because we used to be in the same building when we were on Franklin. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of like, Oh, I really need to do that. You know, it was something in the back of my mind, but I never got around to it for a couple of years. And then, um, you know, it's something that I've just really wanted to do and I'm really excited about because it not only do I want to preserve the photos for people, but it's also about preserving the memories mm-hmm. behind the photos. So that's mm-hmm. where the name comes from, Photographic Memories. Well, and you're seeing a picture from nearly half a century ago. <laughs> Push, pushing 50 years, not quite there, uh, Mike and I, but my wedding picture that has hung on the wall, mm-hmm. and it's just changing color. Yes. I'm looking back at the photographs from that day. They're, they all have this kind of orangey red right. tone to them. So this is just sort of what happens That's when typical for this that was era. 1976. Yep. Mm-hmm. So here, here we go. So you can you can fix that. How oh, and how do you go about fixing that? Um, so the way that I do those, so I don't I won't change your originals at all. Um, I will photograph them or scan them. Like oh. this one would need to be photographed because it's mm-hmm. larger. Those it's could be scanned. Yes, and then I get them onto my computer, and then I go about doing all the color correction, contrast adjustments, clearing up the dust and scratches. Now these are in pretty good shape um as well, far as pretty much yeah other book. than the they, fading yeah. yeah they're they're in good shape but, well, they, but they have kind of changed color this one's maybe a little bit over you'd be surprised frankly. yeah the but, dress is a little blown out yeah a little uncommon. blown out so oh, i love uh, the star filter yeah, yeah it's so, classic that's right. coming back <laughs> a little bit. oh is it <laughs> a little bit yeah I've kind hey of seen you know what goes back. around comes around that's right yeah they're wearing short short skirts like we did <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I laugh every time I see the star filter. I'm like, that's just me with astigmatism on a normal day. <laughs> Driving at night, you know. <laughs> well, you know, of course, these are, again, from 1976. I'm sure there are memories that have been brought back to you from, you know, much, much earlier. Oh, yes. What's the oldest photograph you've fixed? Pretty much as old as photographs can be, you know, around really? 1890. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, early 1900s are a little more typical. Um, I get a lot of black and whites. Um, I get a lot of... Well, you know, the black and white... I was looking at a a picture of my grandparents, my parents' wedding, and they're black and white, and they look awesome. So do you colorize, too? I do. Yeah. Ah. I can, yeah. And actually, my uh, 11-year-old daughter loves practicing colorizing photos, and she's already talking about working for me someday. So I'm hoping... I mean, you never know what kids are going to do in life, but I love that she's excited enjoys about doing what, yeah. what you're doing well so how did you get started with this I mean you had a photographic bu- business already right correct yeah I've been doing photography well really since I was 18 professionally yes so and um, what got you interested in that well you know? I've loved photography my entire life and I mean that very literally mm-hmm. <laughs> as far back as my memories go because um and if you ever listen to my podcast hear the trailer it talks about this exact thing so my mother passed when I was a baby so Mm -hmm. I myself don't have any memories of her so photos are my memories and so photos have always been so important to me even at about four or five years old when I was old enough to kind of grasp like what do you mean this is my mom she's you know this is all I have yeah Yeah. and um, so even at that young age I was just I would spend time flipping through photo albums Mm -hmm. and just I had this deep, deep appreciation for photographs and photography. 
And I started collecting um, when I was a little older. Uh, we used to go antique shopping with my dad. Mm -hmm. He's an antique collector. And I would always find old cameras. So I've collected old cameras for years. <laughs> and I probably have over 100 now. <laughs> but, um, you know, photography is just something I've always loved. And I got into in high school um, and just did it right out of high school professionally, managed some studios, and, of course, had my own businesses. Um, some have flopped and some, some I've kept well, around. I, you but know. You're, you're an entrepreneur, obviously. Yes, <laughs> it's a bug. And there's not a lot of people that I know of that are doing this kind of restoration, mm -hmm. are there? No, a lot of the photographers that I meet really hate doing them. Because, really? Yes, because they are so tedious. Yeah. And, you know, they like to be out there and doing yeah, the posing and, shooting and the pictures and, uh, and being out in the sunlight. Yeah. And, like, for me... It's just so rewarding seeing a picture brought back to life, back right. to its former glory, and sometimes then some. Um, you know, like those, you've seen them for years, mm -hmm. right? So right. You, you get kind of blind used to, to it, but you'd I mean, be shocked I, with the before and after. I know it's just after. faded and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd be shocked with the before and after. And what I'll do is I'll talk to you about, like, okay, what were these colors? Like... What color were your bridesmaids' dresses? Because they look very red, <laughs> well, but they could have been pink. I don't know. No, yeah. no, they they were burgundy. Burgundy, okay. Right, and I picked burgundy because First United Methodist Church's carpet was burgundy. And right before our wedding, they changed out the carpet to fire engine red. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it looks great in the So, yeah, it's the red. carpet's red. pretty red. Well, you know what? I can fix it. The, it the, marabou, <laughs> the marabou, and, you know, that was kind of the color of the actual dress. And yeah. So the, anyway, well, it ended up, it's kind of okay. They sort of disappear, really, frankly. Yeah, it kind but, of blends right in. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the whole reason I started doing restoration specifically was because, like I said, at that young age, I just felt like nothing can happen to these photos. I have to keep these photos safe. Sure. Oh, and yeah. I've They're always precious been, yeah, to since you. adulthood, my family has given me all the family photos because they know that I'm just so attached to them. Right. And so that's, I'm kind of the keeper of all of the photos. Right. And uh, I don't know, something, I turned 35 a few years back and just, just, I was going through a divorce and I just decided, like, I need a change in life. You know, I'd been a supervisor at a data entry company mm -hmm. and for a creative entrepreneur, that's just, not the best. Not, reward, <laughs> you know? not as rewarding it's as it not, could be. It's not. I mean, it was good, but it was just, mm -hmm. I'm just constantly was just like, I want to be doing something more with yeah, my life. Yeah. And and so I did. I started my photography business back up full time. And then I just decided, you know what, I'm going to do restorations as a business. I'm going to quit talking about it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do it. And as so, soon as I set it up, I started getting calls. Oh, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Are you still... Um, like booking weddings? <laughs> are you still doing? You're not. No, you're not, not weddings anymore. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, those are time consuming. Yeah, yeah. I'll let, they I'll can let be the very younger photographers take sure. those on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually the photography company I used to have was called Blackland Photography, mm -hmm. and I used to specialize in weddings. Okay. Um, but it just got to a point where I just dreaded doing it, and I'm like, I don't want to feel that way you no. know I want to be excited and the bride about surely wouldn't want right. to know that you were feeling right that way. I mean it's I always enjoyed it once I got there but yeah, it's yeah. just it's so hard you know any f wedding photographer will, will tell you and no, I've no, just done so so many yeah and I just decided you know what I had an epiphany one night because most of my clients my restoration clients come to me whenever their parents um, or they themselves are going through a life transition. Right. Meaning, like, memory care, retirement, assisted living. You know, and those mm -hmm. kind of pictures are so important when someone is going through that because mm -hmm. that does jog their memory, and they can it remember yes. it. It's really important. That's very, very true, yes. And not only that, I mean, I get people that come to me because somebody has passed, yeah. um, and it just kind of hit me one night. I was like, you know, my target market is pretty much 55 plus mm -hmm. for the most part. I mean, right. 45 to 55, there's there's a good range, but pretty much below 40, I don't really get many clients at all. Um, but it just dawned on me to, why don't I just go directly to the source of mm -hmm. people going through these life transitions and rebrand my company? So now it's called Heirloom Imagery, and I'm taking portraits of aging adults. You can't say seniors because that's really confusing. When you say you do senior portraits, it's, yeah. you think, high school, right? Mm -hmm. But um, So it just kind of fit so well with what I do, and it kind of comes full circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it, it mm -hmm. truly is. Um, 
and of course, you know, like you say, when someone does pass, then it's just a an added layer to find those pictures that mean so much for the for the mm-hmm. uh, video, you know, that's shown off. Right. In the and you always need a good kind of current photo, right? Yeah, right? So why not take one <laughs> of Grandma and Grandpa while they're still here with us right. and have a good current portrait? It's just like picture day, but for Grandma and Grandpa, just yeah. like you do at school. But uh, and it's it's still getting off the ground a little bit. I've been uh-huh. very busy with my restoration business. But so yeah. so do they come to your studio? Or do they come to your place? I've of had business? some people come to me. Um, I no longer have a storefront. Okay. Currently, um, thanks to COVID. Well, <laughs> um, I mean, I in this kind this but, work, you you know, do it your computer. So, right. Yeah. yeah. And I do hope to you know maybe this year or next year open up another storefront okay, really? again mm-hmm. in the studio. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, I go to the facilities. It's just easier. A lot of times, yeah, um, and just set up, and sometimes we'll do it outside if they're they're able, or you know, even if they're chair bound, we can kind of put a background behind them mm-hmm. and like adjust my camera angle to where it's like it doesn't look like right, it doesn't right. look like they're laying down. Yeah, right, so right. there's different tricks that you can do. Oh mm-hmm. man, no, that's it was, yeah. Some of the most uh, precious pictures are those in the last months of my mother's life, Mm. you know, when she was having a good day and and gotten her hair fixed and, you know, had that bright smile. But, you know, of course, then to look back when she was young and, you know, those those pictures mean so much. Yeah, for sure. Especially whenever you get like, um, I had a a lady that did this for her mother. She had slides converted. So like those little Kodachrome Mm. Oh gosh, yeah, right. We have so she converted those and of course she was like 96 and she can't really see right they're little yeah and, i mean and they so, had a little what was that little thing called you know it had a little light and he put it in and you look oh up the viewfinder view, yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah viewfinder, really I guess cool. is what yeah so whenever we digitized them for their for her and blew them up i have a video of her and she, her granddaughter um was holding the phone and like she was able to scroll through and she was like oh my god Oh, then she, yeah. My husband had hair, (laughs) you know, like, and she was, and they were getting (laughs) married, I think, the day after they graduated high school or something. It was just so cute to see her just light up with these memories. Well, as you say, the stories behind them. Yes. Is there there something that comes to your mind that really, that just really touched you, somebody? Gosh, so many times. (laughs) Um, A lot of times it's just the reaction that I get Mm -hmm. from the before and afters. Um, you know, but sometimes people come to me and they say like, this is the only photo I have oh my of my dad. You know, my, oh. my good friend, Ceci, uh, Halubek used to be Ceci Ayala. She owns photography by Ceci. She does mm-hmm. newborns, wedding or not weddings. Sorry, Ceci. Oh, new, <laughs> yeah. Newborns I, I talk about newborn, <laughs> newborn photographers are really something yes, too. I yes, mean, they're that a special is breed. a talent. Yeah. I call her the baby whisperer. Yeah, <laughs> she's they just have so to good be. With them. They have to be. Yeah, but she has two pictures of her dad, and that is it. And that's one thing that has really bonded her and I as friends. Is she also lost her dad before she knew him, and oh. so. That's honestly why we both got into photography. So it's it just, yeah, so it was yeah. just interesting that we've kind of ended up as friends. And um, so, yeah, just stories like that when that's all you have. And it just means so much to me to be able to restore those and then reprint them and then have them on an archival quality paper. Um, everything I do is the highest quality just because that's what right. it's about. We want it to last. Right. Yeah. Are there some maybe tips people need to know about how to store photographs. Yes. I mean, like I say, that's been hanging on the wall. It's had not direct sunlight on it, obviously, but, um, right. you know, just light. These have been in a book, and they've kind of turned anyway. Mm-hmm. So um, so just moisture and UV rays are right. what you want to avoid, avoid at all costs. Yeah, yeah so... I always tell people that if, you know, when you buy a purse or something like that and they have the little silicone packets. Those little packets, silicone packets, yeah. yeah. I hoard those. Oh, because, really? Yeah, because if you have, if you're like me, you have boxes of old photos, right, or bags or right, whatever. Right, Just every now and then throw some in there and it helps absorb the moisture. That's a To good keep idea. stuff from either sticking together and getting, you know, the back stuck to one of another or sticking to glass. And it also keeps them from mildewing. Um, If you do store them in tubs, just make sure it's not um, sharing a wall with, like, a water source. So you might not think about it, but you may have it in a closet with, like, a water heater 
Or really? you might have it on the opposite wall of the washing machine. Well, what happens when that machine floods? Oh, know? there's a possibility. Exactly. Could, yeah. yeah. I mean, hopefully, you know, these days it's easy to buy those totes, like those Tupperware kind mm-hmm. of totes, those mm-hmm. plastic ones. Well, that those are obviously preferable right, versus to cardboard. Cardboard box. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, and then albums. I've got so many albums. <laughs> and, you know, and I know I've, I've, I've talked to people who are organizers and cleaners and help, yes. you know, and, and I've just got cabinets full of these and a lot of pictures that need to just be pitched. It's, it's hard for me to do it's that. Hard. Even if it's just pictures of flowers, cause I'm always taking pictures of flowers. Oh, nice. <laughs> but some of those albums, I mean, back in the day, you pull off the sticky yes. and you'd oh, stick gosh. it onto it. Yeah. That, that glue that was full of uh, acid. <laughs> It just seeps through the photos, yeah. Right, yeah. and then you put the thing on top, and and you can't get the picture In off. In that case, because I deal with that a lot. So what I'll do is if I can pull the, the top layer back, great. I'm able to scan the entire page that okay. way or photograph it that way. Or if I need to leave the, the film down, I can use special polarizing filters that really? remove the glare, mm-hmm. and I can photograph them. That's amazing. Yes, yeah, so they we don't have to. And the same goes for anything that's stuck to glass. Don't try to remove it. Bring it to me. Oh, I know. And you can tell. <laughs> yeah. You can see that it's got that little, you know. Well, and people forget that back in the day, pictures were developed in liquids. Right. And in water. Of course, yeah. So a lot of times, um, if that happens, you can actually put a photo with the glass like get a casserole dish or something put it into the water but use like a deionized water it sounds fancy you can buy it at walmart uh-huh. <laughs> it's, it's just in a jug just or put at it least like tray. filtered water something without hard sediments in it right and you just let it soak and you can take a, a very sharp razor blade and you can Every now and then, pick you know. Just kind of get it. And if it you on. don't want to do it, bring it to me. I will. do and it. And you will do it. That's <laughs> yes. amazing because I mean I took photography at Baylor, mm-hmm. and yeah, you went to the dark room and the whole yes. thing. At the, yeah, back in we, the olden days, we think <laughs> photos <laughs> water bad, but really, I mean, no, you. I mean, we'd pull them out and then mm-hmm. hang them up to yeah. dry. So yeah, they're they're gonna be okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe well, not modern photos. But, so many things have yeah. happened, you know, to change photography, and I've I've yeah. talked to photographers from but back who invested so much money in their cameras and equipment and so forth Mm -hmm. and then you know had to basically throw them away because everything was digital i mean the cameras were different yeah um but now there are some that are kind of going back yes it's making a resurgence it's making a resurgence with uh with old cameras and yes and you know i collect those so i have plenty Um, do you really i do yeah yeah, i probably have over 100 or more i have so (sighs) many every time i think i have them you have a little brownie yes several (laughs) (laughs) i have duplicates and triplicates of some of these but um of course man maybe polaroid cameras may provide some of the most interesting problems perhaps with them uh, like you mean, mean the pictures, the, the yeah, pictures, the pictures themselves. You know, from the old Polaroid days, or did they kind of hold pretty well? They held, you know, sometimes the backing comes off, but right. for the most part, you know, I can work on them just like mm-hmm. I would anything else. Um, the difference is when we reprint them, we just lose the border. Right. Unless we want to keep that for the digital version, because yeah, it's yeah. pretty nostalgic and cool. It is, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's making a comeback film is, and uh, I actually develop film also, so that's... I've gotten you few, so you yeah I've started getting some more calls about people developing film I would love to get to a point where I can have like a film drop off or that would be yeah that would be neat because <clears throat> I suspect there there are people clean, cleaning out a house and find some of those little rolls of film that haven't yes, been yes and you're like what on earth what's is on, on this? this yeah and a lot and to know there's somebody that could yes solve uh-huh. the mystery yep Yep, I've done those. I've done all of them for myself. Uh-huh. I found pictures from the 90s from, like, me in, um, you know, middle school and high school. And it was pretty cool just to look back and, and see some of those memories that were never even developed. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes the, the film does get old, and so they tend to have, like, a lot of, like, bluish tone to them whenever right. they're – or they aren't as good and clean mm-hmm. as they would have been had mm-hmm. they been developed. Because it does expire, but I can still adjust them and – color correct you know and make them look as good as they can so. that is that is amazing revision photo restoration yes i love long that's and hard right. about that name <laughs> that's right i mean that amy you know it's just awesome i like to end these visions these visions these <laughs> i'm thinking about images images yeah i know but these visits 
with a little questionnaire, similar to the okay. one the late, great James Lipton would use on Inside the Actors Studio. So okay. here we go. What is your favorite word? Oh, my goodness. You just hit me with that, like, out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to be cliche and say restoration, just yeah. because it means so much to me personally. Yeah, right. Um, it's taking, in, you know, the word revision in my um, business name. I, mm -hmm. The reason I picked that is because you're taking something old, and improving upon it, you know, right. or taking something from its original state and, you know, making it better. So it kind of made sense. But I think restoration, I'd have to say. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. What is your least favorite word? <laughs> um, anything that's like a tongue twister, probably. <laughs> Gosh. Um, My, when I was an anchor, military helicopter was... <laughs> <laughs> really? That's my least favorite word. Two words Two together. Hours, like, I don't know. Mi military helicopter. <laughs> military helicopter. Yeah, I can't tell I you see, how many times I, I would. That. <laughs> to me, that, was, that yeah. was my least favorite. I would rewrite copy so I didn't have to say military um, helicopter. <laughs> I'm sorry to offend anybody, but the name Rory bothers me. <laughs> Because it sounds like Scooby Doo saying Rory. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know why. But yeah. That one yeah don't name me. Me Rory. Uh, um, what turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? I mean, I got a good guess. But yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to be too predictable here, but um, just you know, even clients bringing in old picture out al like photo albums yeah. I just get so excited going through all of these yeah. I'm like oh we could do so much with this and um that and just being in my element I love making jewelry oh it's really very, yeah mm -hmm. I make um jewelry and it's it's just cathartic you know it's like therapy yeah. and I like painting and drawing and love music yeah, yeah you're just, a creative soul yes, it sounds yes like. through and through yeah, for sure yeah, yeah. yeah well then what turns you off creatively spiritually or emotionally feeling pressured <laughs> yeah I guess it's like if somebody is like for example if I have art that I'm doing I want to be creative with it I want to do what I want to do with it yeah. but if somebody's critiquing it like oh can you adjust this and can you or if it's a commissioned piece it just kind of takes the fun out of it for me because I feel so much pressure and I just mm -hmm. want to get it perfect whereas if I'm doing it for myself I can just go with the flow and just yeah. be creative with it yeah yeah mm -hmm. what is your favorite sound Ooh. we've been talking about visual things I listen to white noise every night That's, do you really yeah, yeah. just to, like, to sleep I, mm -hmm. <laughs> white noise and um <laughs> kittens purring <laughs> you oh, know yeah. things like that I've never just, heard that from yeah, anybody, but I, mean, I like, like that yeah, too yeah, yeah I love my kitties and that makes you happy mm -hmm. yeah because because the little critter is Maybe happy too that well then <laughs> yeah. what is your least favorite sound <laughs> even thinking about it makes me crazy just <laughs> you got it then. <laughs> yeah like the the windshield wipers dragging on the, oh on yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> when they're too dry yeah. or like markers squeaking or my number one most hated sound is if you drop something and it settles like it gets faster and faster like oh. if you drop a lid or something and it's like rawr, rawr, rawr. yeah or like a bottle is in you know and and you're it like, rocks back and forth when will this be done oh my gosh it drives me crazy <laughs> <laughs> okay um you, you know, have kind of followed your passion, something you knew um, early on uh, as for a profession. Sure. Mm -hmm. It sort of evolved for you as well. But uh, what other profession would you like to have tried? Um, I went to nursing school. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, well, I there actually, you go. I went to MCC. I got my associate's degree, and I was in nursing school. And I was really close to becoming an RN and um, wanted to get my BSN, maybe even yeah. a doctorate and I went on a medical mission trip to Peru and I have some amazing pictures that I took there mm -hmm. and um, when I was there my nursing director she was she was so excited that we had a you know a trip photographer mm -hmm. and I was showing her some of the pictures she's like gosh these are just gorgeous she said she said you know you would make a great nurse but you're an even better photographer and clearly mm -hmm. it is your passion and I said you're right and so I got back from um, that trip that semester and it was time to sign up for the next semester and I just didn't do it mm. I just didn't have it in me I was burned out and I just I didn't love going to my clinical yeah. you know assignments so it was I mean I love people and I love helping people right, right, and that was right. very rewarding but yeah at the heart of it it's just not what I really wanted to be doing it was my plan b 
Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I love yeah. that. I, I love hearing that story. Well, then what profession or job do you know you would never want to do? No, thank you. Hmm. I think anywhere where I just have to sit at a nine to five <laughs> and just yeah. really any job where I just have to report to people. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I don't mean to sound oppositional, but it's just I love the freedom that I have yeah. of making my own schedule. Um, you know, sometimes I have to be careful and make sure I set deadlines for myself, or right. I can get kind of, I can get kind of complacent there. But um, yeah, I think just anywhere where I don't have freedom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, good. One last question: What do you want to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? <laughs> um, would you like to meet your mom? You know, um, it's just something, um, I know we're on a closing note here, but um, there was a paper I had to write in, in college, and it was talking about a mundane event that, a seemingly mundane event that had a profound impact on you. Mm -hmm. And I wrote this short story called On the Other Side of the Clouds, and it was about my first trip in an airplane, and I was in middle school and, you know, like younger, like probably sixth or seventh grade. And I was so excited because I had thought my whole life that, um, I may have been a little younger. I thought that, you know, because of cartoons and things that angels sat on clouds, mm -hmm, you know. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to get to see my mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was so excited. And um, I didn't verbalize that to anybody. Oh. And we went up through the clouds on the airplane and it was just white clouds. And it yeah. just crushed me, you know, but, um, and it was at that point when it was really like, okay, I have to start grieving now. Like that yeah. was really the moment for me where I was like, I'm never going to see my mom in this life. And so now, I mean, that doesn't scare me, you know, I'm not like ready for it by any means, right, but right. at the same time, it's, I think that it's going to be peaceful and yeah. it's going to be, it's going to be great whenever it happens. So. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Going to give me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am not Barbara Walters. It make my guests cry. I'm the one that's always crying. No. I'm used to it. A lot of my uh, clients uh, cry too. I'm sorry. Uh, well, but you you do. You have a job mm -hmm. where you're you're helping people. You know to renew those memories mm -hmm. and to you know to to just make them crystal clear and and beautiful for them. And it's just an awesome thing. Thank you. I'm I, de I'm just delighted. I'm so okay, so you see, it. this is the. This is the before. <laughs> yes. We're going to drop the after, so stay with us, and you will see the after. Yes, absolutely. But, yeah, it, Amy, it's just awesome. Revision, photo, restoration, mm -hmm. and uh, you can you, you have a website. I mean, you have yep. a revisionphotorestoration.com. Dot com. Very mm -hmm. easy. And you're also on social media? Yes, uh, Facebook, just um, at Revision Photo Restoration, and Instagram, at Revision Photo. Um, and I also have these cool business cards kind of around town. Yeah, they town really are. Yeah, yeah, they all have before and after. Code. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's, this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of before and afters on there, and there's a cool little slider feature where you can play with it and kind of see the before and after in, like, real time. It's Very good. Mm -hmm. And uh, and your podcast, again, the name of it? Photographic Memories, the untold stories behind the images we restore. So join Amy there, <laughs> and we're so delighted you've joined us here today. Thank so you. Thank we'll you for having you. me. See you again next time Great. on Central Texas Life. Bye-bye. Bye. Central Texas Life with Ann Harder is part of the Rogue Media family. Be sure to check out our other shows at roguemedianetwork.com. Please rate this show five stars on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Join us again soon for more Central Texas Life with Ann Harder. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.